Koa here of KNFS, where we anglers are always learning, sharing knowledge about fishing and fishes. And I just thought it would be convenient for y'all if I made you a little cheat sheet hook size reference for all the common sunfishes. So in this video, we're briefly going to cover this chart and where you can get it for a free download. Then we'll also go over a few extra tips for better ensuring those catch and release fish are released safely. And then we'll dive back into the chart to discuss a few details of the associated hook sizes for each species. But this chart right here is my gift to the KNFS community here and I hope it helps some of you uh, knock off some uh, of your life listers or just better target these species. I've broken it up into the quality adult section which covers most adult sizes in most populations and then there's the larger adult section which covers the nice size specimens to get that make up a small percentage of most populations. And finally, we have the section of what I call the rare beasts, which as the name suggests, uh, those are the ones that give us the wonderful chills if we're ever lucky enough to encounter them in the wild. So to make things convenient for y'all, I've posted free JPEG images of this chart at koa.org forward slash CS hook size that CS stands for common sunfishes, that you can easily save on your computer or smartphone for a quick reference in your photo gallery or wherever you save your photos. Uh, there are a couple different size options as well. Likewise, if not wanting to download an image, you can quickly just reference this video with this chart by uh, thumbs up in the video and that then saves it in your video YouTube library. You gotta be logged in to do that. And this chart here shows fish sizes in inches, but because I tend to get carried away with details, I also made a chart in centimeters for those of you preferring the metric system uh, with the same download options. So our chart here doesn't focus on different types of hooks, but rather we're focusing on the size of the hook. Fortunately, lepamids or these common sunfishes can be caught on a wide variety of types of hooks. As you most definitely know, if you chase these fishes, or as you've just seen from my specific uh, hook suggestions in the uh, common sunfish videos here on KNFS. And unfortunately there is no industry standard for hook size, but that doesn't really matter as I've presented a number of options under each category. What really concerns us is the gape size or the gap size. This is what ensures the hook is small enough to easily fit into the mouth of a fish, but also big enough to hook around that lip. And as you probably know, there is a real efficiency when targeting a specific size of your target species with the right size hook. Like if I'm chasing northern sunfish, there's no way I'm going to be putting on a size 6 hook because that'll just be too big for the vast majority of specimens in that population. To help with the hook size reference a bit, I took this even further and I made y'all a couple printer-friendly PDF documents that if you print out without modifying the dimensions, should show exactly the gape sizes I'm talking about. So you can put your hooks on the printout and see if your size six matches the size six I'm talking about. I made one PDF file that is an ink saver. Uh, and then I made another one with my Lepimid photos that'll definitely use up more of your ink if you don't care about that. Again, those images and PDFs are all free uh, and can be found at koa.org forward slash CS hook size. Overall, one hook size can catch specimens outside my specific size range. Like a size six hook for a bluegill can still land you a 10 plus inch bluegill. This chart is just about maximizing efficiency for what you want to catch. If you only want to focus on bigger specimens, use the sizes in the larger fish category. And if you want to catch more fish of that species, or you just want to try and knock one off of your life list, use that single size hook suggestion or just pick a size in the quality adult section. So if you're new to fishing, these next handful of tips will probably just be helpful in making sure that your fish, if you need or want to return it to the water, is returned safely. To so always keep tension on the line, even if it's just keeping a slightly taut line, this ensures that you will make that hook set quickly and the fish won't swallow the hook. Hence why I avoid using floats like your standard bobber if I'm not harvesting my catches is floats create a delay in hook setting, even with self setting hooks. And even if you're monitoring the line, there's a better chance that the hook will get swallowed when using a float. Squeeze your barbs down halfway or all the way. 
I always recommend squeezing barbs down anyways when teaching kids to fish, primarily just for the human safety side of things. But a barb isn't always necessary if you're quick to hook set and keep tension on the line. It makes de-hooking much faster and safer for the fish. If you're going for large specimens that can really put up a fight, keeping the barb on is probably a good idea. But for micro fishing, it's always a good idea to use barbless hooks or just do what I like to do. Give the barb a squeeze down all the way or halfway. Bring pliers with cutters. Besides my rod reel hook and bait, this is the one essential piece of gear I will never ever leave behind. I usually have three pairs of pliers on me at all times of different sizes. Pliers help de-hook if you've managed to pierce one of the thicker bones in the mouth. Pliers are what save fish's lives in the end when you're fishing. I'm gonna grab something for you. So here's a fish. Pretend this is a hook. It makes me cringe when I see bass anglers knock the hook out of their fish. That's a catch and release fish. No es bueno. It's gonna have a headache. Brain damage. Anyways, cutters are necessary if you hook the gut or even the gill rakers. Don't try to pull out the hook of a gut hooked fish. That just won't be good. Cut the line as close as you can to the hook and that'll give the fish the best chance of survival. And just make sure you hold your fish securely and properly. This is just something I see new fishers have a hard time with. With common sunfishes, it's really just about bringing your hand down over the line, moving from the front of the fish to the back, and you knock down those fins and you squeeze the spines down. It's a firm pressure, but not, not too hard. So now let's just look at the chart and just go over a few extra details for each species. So the red breast has a fairly large mouth, but most mature specimens will be around four to six inches. So a 10 or an eight is perfect for that. If you just need to knock one of these off of your life list, then just get down to your creek or river and start with that size 10. And if you find a population and you want a bigger one, move up to that size six. The green sunfish has a bit bigger mouth than a red breast. Uh, and they hit hard. This is one of the few lepimid species that becomes sexually mature at a pretty small size. So you can find a beautiful adult specimen at around three inches long, which a size 12 would do you well. If you only want to target large greens, they'll have no problem taking a size one or two hook. The pumpkin seed has a small mouth and most populations actually have fairly small adults. So a number 10, is best to start with, but a number six will still be able to land you those PB pumpkin seed. The war mouth has the largest mouth of all the lepimids. A size four will be fine for most adult war mouth. And if needing to sift around smaller lepimids, toss on a one odd or even a two odd to avoid the hook sets on those smaller lepimids. The orange spotted is the first one on our list that I consider a micro fishing species, although there really is no industry standard to define micro fishing limits. Most adults uh, are around one and a half to four inches. They, they also mature fairly young, fairly small. I've had plenty of success using a size 18 to capture them, but they can mature at a small size, like I said. So a 20 is a safer bet if needing to knock one off of your life list, and a size 12 or 10 will definitely work to target larger adults. The bluegill has a small mouth. If wanting a bunch of adult specimens, a number eight or six will do you just fine. Though a 10 inch bluegill will still easily be hooked with a number eight, I would recommend going to a four or even a two if you're only targeting those large specimens. The dollar sunfish is another, I think we should toss into the micro fishing category. Don't expect dollar to get much past five inches. A good old number 16 will land most adults and there's really no need to go past the number 10 for uh, large adults. The long ear sunfish, as we've discussed in that northern sunfish video, has a lot of variability across the range, but typically most populations don't see specimens getting much bigger than six and a half or seven inches. So go with a size 10 to ensure you're getting an adult and a size six will work fine for navigating those PBs. 
The readier sunfish reaches the largest size within this genus of fishes, but still has a small mouth. Most adult specimens of red ear are still best caught on a size 8, but if you're only targeting those 8 to 10 inches, then go with the size 4. Those monsters in places like Lake Havasu could be targeted with a 1 easily. The red spotted sunfish is actually a fairly petite fish. Most adult specimens are going to be around 3 to 5 inches, which a number 14 would work well for. The larger specimens could be targeted fine with size 8. The northern sunfish is another that we'll consider under micro fishing. Most adults will be around two and a half to four and a half inches. I like using a number 18 when I'm sampling for them. And if I'm finding them, I'll throw on a number 12 for larger adults. And there's no need to go past a number 10 for northern. The spotted sunfish tends to reach a bit larger sizes than those uh, closely related red spotted sunfish, but I'd still say a number 12 is best to use if you're targeting most mature specimens. A number 6 will do you just fine to land a PB of this species. And finally, we have the bantam sunfish, which most definitely counts as a micro fishing species. Most adults won't get past two and a half inches, but their mouths are actually fairly large for their small body size. A number 26 will be a safe bet to get one, but for the rare large ones that reach up to 4 inches, an 18 will work. Now out of all the species and hybrids and thousands of specimens I've caught in this genus, I have not got the bantam on rod and reel. I had to capture those with a dip net because I was a bit too eager using a number 12 trying for 4 inches, of which I thought they were more abundant at the time. I think you can remember that from the movie The 13 here on KNFS. I haven't been back in a bantam range since that last attempt to catch him, but I do catch plenty of banded sunfishes out here on the east coast. And these species are so similar in morphology to the bantam sunfish. Same diet pretty much, same habitat type. And then number 22 is my go-to for nice adult banded specimens, which could also work for some good bantam specimens. Again, this chart is uh, free to download, free for you to use. It's at your disposal at uh, koa.org forward slash CS hook size. Fish responsibly and good luck.